Can I have the clicker? Yeah. Thank you so much, DJ. Hello, everybody. Good morning. <laughs> Tigers, rhinos, pandas, elephants, lions, wolves. These are the big charismatic species. We all know them. We grew up with them. They're super familiar to us. They're iconic. They're also, they also get the majority of conservation attention. They also get a lot of the funding from conservation. But what about the little guys? What about the forgotten species? Well, today I'm really excited to be here to introduce the ultimate underdog. <laughs> the pangolin. My name is Paul Thompson. I'm the co-founder of Save Pangolins, and I'm a vice chair of the IUCN SSC Pangolin Specialist Group. I'm really excited to be here to talk about my favorite species, and I'm also super thankful for WCN for giving us the opportunity to talk about pangolins, because they're amazing, they're severely threatened, and importantly, so few people have ever even heard of them. So let's do a show of hands. Who here has learned about pangolins, say, in the last two, three months? Don't be shy. See, a lot of people. In fact, most people around the world have never even heard of pangolins. When I first heard of them, I was like, penguins? <laughs> Little black and white bird? No, pangolins. So when I first discovered them, I could not believe that I shared the world with this scaly little friendly dragon. <laughs> the more I learned about them, the more I was blown away. Most people think there's only one pangolin, but in fact, there's eight species. Four live in Africa, and four live in Asia. And within the eight species, there's quite a lot of diversity. You've got some like this guy, this little tank, who's like a walking artichoke. <laughs> this is a Cape pangolin. They live in Southern Africa. They live on the ground. They dig burrows. And then other species like this. This is the Sunda pangolin in Southeast Asia. It's more sleek, more cat-like almost. And they spend a lot of time up in the trees. What all pangolins have in common is they eat insects, so one single pangolin can eat 70 million insects in a year. They have no teeth. They're essentially harmless to people. They evolved about 80 million years ago. So although they sort of resemble aardvarks and anteaters, they're in fact more closely related to the carnivora, the cats, dogs, bears, weasels, which is surprising. So pangolins have another thing in common. All eight species are threatened with extinction. So there's a real joy in discovering something like this exists that we share the planet with, right? That joy quickly turned to sadness when we started getting more and more reports like this. Hundreds, sometimes thousands of pangolins being poached and headed to Asia, mainly to China and Vietnam. Why? Well. Their meat is considered a delicacy. It's a luxury good throughout much of Southeast Asia. And then on top of that, their scales, the very thing that makes them so unique, is ground up and used in dif different Asian, traditional Asian medicines. And on top of that, they are used to treat a variety of ailments, everything from arthritis to circulation issues, newly lactating mothers that are having problems, so it's, uh, it's supposed to be a real panacea, so the, the demand is quite high. And of course, we don't have any scientific um, evidence to back that up. The scale of the issue, the size of it, is massive. This is a horrible photo, but it really brings it home. This is about 4,000 pangolins that were confiscated by customs officials in Indonesia. And now, thousands of pangolins dead for no good reason. So that's why I co-founded Save Pangolins with my partner, Carrie Parker, who's out here somewhere. We wanted to raise awareness of pangolins and all the threats facing them. And on top of that, we wanted to drive support to the conservation efforts on the ground and to help champions like our next guest speaker. It's simple, awareness and action. That's what we want to do. Now, I'm going to show you something exciting. So for the first time ever, we're going to watch a two, uh, it's about a two-minute documentary by conservation filmmaker Katie Schuler, and it's never before been seen until right now, so debuting. 
and I think it provides a fantastic overview of the pangolin story. the world's most illegally trafficked mammal. 100,000 pangolins poached every year. That's probably the tip of the iceberg. One million pangolins in just the last 10 years. The sheer size of this is so huge that sometimes I wake up at night and I think we're too late or that I'm not doing enough. We seriously live in a world where pangolins might go extinct in our lifetime. And that's daunting to say the least. But then I meet people that inspire me and give me hope. So last year I was in Singapore at a workshop where we were designing a conservation plan for the critically endangered Sunda pangolin. And I met a young Malaysian woman who was this bright energy, she was competent, confident, and she combined research with community-based outreach and education in her home country in Malaysia. And I was just like, she gives me hope. So I'm really pleased to introduce our next speaker. Without further ado, Elisa Penjang. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Hello, hello. Yeah, OK. Good morning, everyone. Ah, oh, so lovely. It's, it's a lovely day. So this is me. <laughs> I was a very uh, lucky li li little girl because I live with my family in a village nearby the forest. So I I am very familiar with a lot of wildlife. For example, Borneo pygmy elephants, orangutans, um, proboscis monkey, bird pig. At one time, I was playing outside my house. And then these strange animals. It was when I was 10 years old. A strange animals come, uh, come towards me. Um, and then I stopped playing. You know? It was very, very weird, but in a cool way. Strange, bizarre. So I saw this. This is the one that I 
found that 10 years when I was 10 years old. Now, pangolin, for me, is, is really amazing. Back then, wh when I see that pangolin, it really changed my life, like forever. And then I think that pangolin is, 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 is amazing. It's, it's, you, you can see the scales is unique. It's one of the, the, like the unique feature of in the mammal kingdom. And then it's, just take a look at it. It's very amazing. It's, some people told me it's a small dinosaur. And then people uh, tell me it's a walking pine cone. Mm, you know? And then also sometimes they say, probably it's a monitor lizard from afar. So it's many people, yeah, they, 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 they uh, it's, it's recognized in, 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 in like many, many, many names because they don't really know about pangolin. They don't have any information, right? But through time working with this pangolin, yeah. You see, pangolins, the baby is called pangopup. <laughs> yeah, so it's the mothers give uh, birth for one offspring a year, and then the baby right at the back of the, the tail of the mother. So it follows the mother everywhere. And after three months, they will separate uh, from the mother. So this is really amazing, amazing animals. Like Paul said just now, they eat insects, yeah? And then for me, this is also another importance, the importance of pangolin, because they help with, together with other animals, yeah, who, who also eat insects. They help to maintain insect population in our ecosystem. For example, if we take out pangolins, and then who will do the job? Anybody here wants to eat insects? No, right? So they, they are there in the ecosystem to do this job. So it's, it's really, this is very important. If you take one animal from the ecosystem, something will change. We don't, we, it, yeah, something will change. Now, when I show pictures to people, they, they will say, is, a, is really a pangolin climbing a tree? So I've seen, I walk in the forest, and then I, s I observe pangolin climbing a tree. People said, how can they climb a tree? They, they look heavy because of the scales. Yeah, but they can cl climb trees just like the primates. There is no limitation. And then they also can swim. I will observe them swimming across, like from, from one side to the other side, like 100 meters wide river. So they, they are very fantastic animals. So this is one of the species that I'm working with is the Sunda pangolin found in Borneo Island. So this is also where I grow up. I, uh, I, raised, I was raised here and also work here in, in Sabah. Yeah? Now, just now Paul said about pangolins being threatened. This is true. Also in, in my country, I am coming from Asian community. So in, in my country, the local communities usually, they 50 years ago, they eat pangolins. It's for personal consumptions. And then also there's been history, recorded history about pangolins used as a traditional medicine, like the, they use the scales to make a belt and somehow can, can cure this, um, what do you call this, backache like that. Is, is, is ridiculous, actually. And then also, you see, like this, meat, yeah, they, in Vietnam, when people eat meat, it means you are smart. You are coming from a wealthy family. It's like that, so it's very, it's very um, popular belief. And this one, the scales, they, they make it like a powder, and then it cure all, a lot of illnesses, according to traditional local communities and traditional medicine. And then I think in pangolins, I think the, m the most important thing is that because of all this belief, that, that really, this superstitious belief, 
that really kills these pangolins. Yeah, so this is um, is really bad because si some of my colleagues who is doing study on, on pangolin, they've done they they ha they've done the study on the scales. It is scientifically not proven. There is nothing, but it's really hard to 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 stop you know to change this behavior but we can do it we we need to start a uh, change behavior now you can look at this this is devastating news if you google pangolin you type pangolin on your phone or computer you can see a lot of devastating news about pangolin so in saba it happened every year 2017 and then 2016 and then uh, for example 2017 eight tons of pangolin scales sees in Saba. There is so many. Huge number of pangolins. Yeah? And then for pangolins, it is very popular. It is easy to smuggle pangolin because it's not like ivory. So pangolin scales, you can easily put it in a box and conceal them with, with for example, sardi snacks like that. So it's easy passed by from the local communities. I, I mean, from the local authorities. Yeah, So it's it's a 20% uh, of illegal trade coming from pangolin. So it's really, that's why they, they are now the most traffic um, wildlife. Now, I think when people ask me questions, do you think we are too late? They ask me that question. I think there is never, it's never too late to save this species, never. So uh, my team and I, we work here in, 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 in the Nau Girang Field Center, um, working on pangolin. So I am doing my research now with Cardiff University UK, and then Cardiff University and Sabah Wildlife Department, they co-manage the Nau Girang Field Center, yeah? They manage, and then most of the time, I am based in the forest. So I, I, I was here on the 9th, on the 8th, I, I was in the forest in the morning, and then straight come to nine here, so many people. <laughs> you, you, you understand what I mean, right? Yeah, it's uh, confusing. <laughs> yeah, so that is where I, I walk. It's beautiful forest. It's a Borneo is a dense friend forest. So many amazing, other amazing animals. So this is some of my works. Uh, in order to understand better about pangolins, I set up camera traps in the forest, like 40 camera traps. And then like I want to understand how they distribute in the forest. I also do, it's, it's very rare to find pangolin in the forest because it's not easy to find them. But it's, I will try to find pangolin signs, for example, the burrows like that. So it's, yeah, you, you, I can still see pangolins from the signs. So this is some of the, um, uh, kind of research I do. Another one is I walk, I try to capture wild pangolin and then attach a GPS trackers. So through the scales, I make a hole and then through the scales, I put the GPS trackers, but don't worry, it's not through the skin, it's just through the scales. Yeah, so it's no animals were harmful in my research. <laughs> yeah, and then this is very important. This technology is very important because I want to understand better about pangolin. For example, I want to understand how they move, like in a fragmented or degraded habitats. Yeah, um, you can see in Asia also the problem now is palm oil plantation. So I want to see how pangolins can they, c what is their response to from the forest and to the palm oil plantation, which is already degre uh, uh, fragmented, degraded. So I want to understand that. Also, we want to, I want to understand um, their foraging behavior, the sleeping sites, like that. Mm -hmm. In Apart from doing my research, I'm also doing education. I think this is very important. When I do my research, I found out that many people in the cities, they don't really know what is a pangolin local sport international so i i go out uh, not go out actually I, I i i do another like not only research but i i try to start outreach program so i i work with schools 
I go to school and talk about Fangolin with the kids. Also, I contact the hotel resort to speak with the tourists. Yeah, and it's very, it's, 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 for me, it's very important. Like one of these pictures, you, you can see the picture over there, Pangolin. This is a kid from, her name is Alicia from US. So, oh, she, she draw this pen, uh, this, she should draw this one and then ask her mom to send it to me and then put a little note. When I read the email, when I grow up, I want to protect pangolins. That is, that, that girl will be a pangolin hero one day. <laughs> Amazing. Now, this is also another out kind of outreach program. Um, I work with the NGO, local NGO and local artists. So we create a giant pangolin sculpture um, using recycled materials. For example, a uh, signage board, board like that, um, tomato sauce bottle. So it's, yeah, it's, it's really, um, so we, and then we place this in, a, in an airport, in Malaysian airport, because I believe there's a, an airport is like a cafe. Everyone is, you know, they, they come and in. So this is for locals and for the international communities, yeah? International tourists. So they come and then they, we c they were away more about pangolins. Hmm. So this is, another thing I do is, um, what do you call this? Enforcement. I am a wildlife warden. In my center, there's only two wildlife warden, uh, myself and the other, the other our, our manager. So in order, being a wildlife warden is an involuntary position. We, we don't get paid. And then, but bec and to become one, you need to follow a training and then you need to pass an examination. And I pass, yeah? <laughs> I follow this guy in the forest. I'm telling you, these guys are very, very tough in a dense rainforest, you know? They're very tough. And then I follow them to survey snare traps, to survey hunting, act, uh, hunting activities. So we remove, we collect all these traps and then we remove them. Um, what we and then identify uh, hunting sites so that the goal is to stop hunting activities in, the, in that place. Now you can see, we are very happy here. <laughs> so I mean, I'm the only one in the group which is a, a girl, yeah? So it means that I am tough too, <laughs> you know? So this is especially for kids. I, I, I see some kids here, right? Especially girls, if you want, if you're interested to do this, if I can do it, you can do it too, yeah? <laughs> yeah. And then, now in 2014, I worked with my team and then a local, I to consult with the Sabah Wildlife Department. Because at that time in 2014, the pangolin, the law said they can still be hunted. They can still be consumed, um, uh, like collected. So for me, it doesn't make sense because it's already threatened to extinction and you still want to, to, to do that. So we work, I work with my team and then we push for the government to, to protect pangolin, to, like to make, make it more, the penalty more harsher like that. And then it's really intimidating to talk with the ministers. I, I wrote the cabinet paper and then send it to the ministers and then present to them. It's very intimidating, it's very challenging because when you're in a meeting room and then talking with all of these ministers with different, you know, different kind of thi thinking, so it's, it's really uh, challenging, but we, we fight, my team and I, we fight for them, uh, for the pr pr proposal. And finally, in 2018, Pangolin was granted the highest protection in Sabah. Yeah, amazing. So this is the 
Um, for me, this is a success for Pangolin in Zaba. It's, it's amazing because more the penalty is more harsher, and then I think in psychologically people are more afraid to, to do these hunting activities. Yeah, we want we want we want that we want that. And then also, um, let me see. So Houston Zoo gave um, selected me as one of the recipient for Wildlife Warrior Award in 2017. Yes. <laughs> it was amazing because Houston Zoo is the Renee is here. Yeah, you don't have any idea what you did to me. <laughs> I mean, the moment I received it in 2017, when I see uh, most of the social media, they were talking about pangolin. They were talking about yeah about me being being uh, being this this recipients. Journalists met me and then they they want to interview me. Radio station they also want to interview me, which has never happened before. So n right now, when when people go to work, you know, and they really listen to radio, they can learn about pangolin. So this is very important for me. This is also another success for pangolin because more people are aware about this. So thank you, Houston Zoo. <laughs> now. For me, I think I will never stop to do pangolin research because it's never too late to save pangolin. When I finish my research, I will continue to work on pangolin. And then, for example, I want to work with my government to really protect pangolin. We have the law now, but we need to increase um, the protection. We need to strengthen the enforcement. And then also, I want to continue to reach out to people, to educate people, so that more people will be aware of what's uh, for pangolin. One of them is to, to set up a pangolin conservation center in Sabah in the future. So I would really want to do that because it's very important for, for, for pangolin. And then you can see this picture. Like, like take one second and see this picture. And then look at me. <laughs> you see an ordinary, ordinary person. Right? I am not a superhero. I, am, I don't have any mutant power. <laughs> I don't have any magical power. This is just me, an ordinary person. Be, but because I have my passion, I am determined to save this species, I think what I do, you can also do in your own way to, to save pangolins. So I would like everyone in this room, I would like to please all of you to work with me to fight for pangolin. So uh, with that, I end my presentation. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you so much, Elisa. That oh, was incredible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come stand here. All right. Um, I really liked what you said, that there's, there's still time. And I believe that. Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing. So I want to say thank you to all of you here for, for doing what you can to help. And people often ask me, how can I help? What can I do here in America so far from the problem when the problem is so big? So first, please support conservation efforts like mm -hmm. Save Pangolins and Champions mm -hmm. like Elisa. Mm -hmm. And then secondly, spread the word. Honestly, telling your friends, posting on social media, all of that, it really does help. It's so important to, to sorry. Oh, sorry, sorry. Hello? <laughs> hey. <laughs> Yeah, no, hey, where are you? No, no, I'm here. So sorry. Yeah, no, no, yeah, it's good, it's good. Um, hey, hey, hold on a second. Sure, hold on. Jimmy, can you beam this up, my call? Hello, this is Jane Goodall, and I truly wish that I could be with you today, but uh, unfortunately that's not possible. But I want to urge all of you to do anything you can to help protect pangolins. There are eight species in different parts of the world. They're little known because they're shy and nocturnal, but they are, they have become the most trafficked animal in the world thanks to the mistaken belief that their scales have magic medicinal powers. And so please do everything you can to help them 
and I hope to see many of you at the WCN Expo next year. So, bye now.